2016. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for the sign of prayer. A moment of reflection, please. <sighs> flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been yeah, provided in the following manner. If you say that's what you're saying. The annual you're notice okay, yes, is forwarded to the Asbury Park okay. Press, the Coast and Restore Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Items for review. City manager's report on issues raised at prior council meetings. Nothing at this time, Madam Clerk. We have no special events this evening. So we're up to review of council uh, our agenda items for May 25th, 2016. I have items. You want me to just go through mine or you want to start with No, your? just because if, if we can deviate a little bit because I see under the I don't care what we do. <laughs> Let's motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. But just, I see Michael has quite a few under his, which may answer a lot of our questions. So we'll let Michael go first as soon as we all find our place. So give us 30 seconds. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there's various matters listed under the matter, matters from city manager this evening. One which is a draft ordinance which is not available for, which we're not recommending any changes for this week, um, it'll be in for June, is an ordinance to change the permits for special events. Currently under the, okay. currently under the city code, the special events is, a, which has always been viewed as an internal review committee of city staff and elected officials of special event permits is actually a public body, it's a board. Um, the code listed is the Special Events Com um, Review Board, um, which quite honestly has, makes no sense because it is an internal committee. So the changes there um, are, are twofold. One changes it from the Director of Commerce position, which no longer exists in the code, to staff appointed by the city manager um, right now, it's Ms. Alicia Floyd, who has been here numerous times uh, as the coordinating process. And two, there's going to be another change um, that we've been working on as the governing body doesn't have a seat at the table under this board. And it would be entitled um, Special Events Internal Review Committee, in which there's been another change from what you have that two elected officials shall sit on the board to be um, divided amongst yourselves, whoever wants to do it. But it doesn't change any of the permit fees. It doesn't change any of the application. It actually makes it an internal committee from the way it's been operating for how many years. It actually makes it correct. Is there any questions on that at this time? No. no. Yeah, I'm just a little confused. Did you say the council can't sit on this particular board? Right now, no. But under the proposed change, it, change, it would make it mandatory for two elected officials to sit on it. Um, it's a public body now under the code where everyone is supposed to be taking meeting minutes. There should be an, a, a vote for a chair, a vice chair, um, but the city has never done that. It's one of those things that we caught while we were cleaning up stuff. So this will make it an internal working committee with council representation as well it should be. The only, only question, <coughs> excuse me, I have towards the end, pages aren't numbered. Second to last page, it talks to, about insurance. It doesn't have a dollar amount. Do the, the insurance is referenced elsewhere in the city code. We were looking at that. Okay. So if that would revert back to there. Okay. Thank you. Next on the list is the proposed set aside ordinance. Uh, currently in the city code, there is a set aside program where certain amount of city purchases are required or should be required to be given to various um, entities, minorities, small business, and women. 
Um, the city code is not current with what the real world um, avenue is. Currently under the city code, the affirmative action officer is the person who determines what is and what is not a small business, a uh, minority owned small business, a women owned small business, and what the actual dollar amount would be. I quite honestly don't understand how an affirmative action officer would be involved in the purchasing aspect of things. Plus the city doesn't have an appointed affirmative action officer, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So the proposal would change this to finance or the qualified purchasing agent. Um, there is some redundancy that Count, uh, Deputy Mayor Quinn noticed. In one section, it states that 5% should be given to women and 5% to female, which is the same thing in the code. Um, the major change is that the city would not be qualifying the, the businesses anymore, the, um, which they've never done in the past anyway. Currently, the state has a program called NJ Savvy, which is uh, their database for all minority-based businesses, minority, women, veterans, disabled veterans, disabled um, businesses, anyone who qualifies, they have an actual database that's set up. Um, my proposal to change the ordinance is to reference that database. It's a database that any, it, it, it would open up the opportunities um, statewide for businesses located in Asbury. So obviously, it's a preference first for Asbury people, but the state then would do the work that we're not doing now because we've never done it in the past. So it's a state certification. You know it's a legitimate business. They meet the insurance requirements, business registration requirements, um, public work contractor requirements. But by using this database, it opens it up to any statewide entity that searches this database. Um, for example, any federal funded project you need to spend that spends over $100,000 the state is referencing municipalities, and this was huge in Sandy, to use this database. So then that would open up all these opportunities for Asbury Park businesses as just instead of being set up here. Yes, they'd be here, yes, they'd get priority, but then it would also open up for the rest of the state. And that's that to me is, is a big um, proponent of this. So with that on, if there, I think we do need to clarify the 5% women and female. I think that just needs to be changed somehow. Um, we're going to have to do some software upgrades. Um, as you know, we're in the process of hiring a CFO and a treasurer, so I'm not sure how much we can really implement this this year, but this is further than the city's ever done with it, so it's a good solid start. And can you check, so it's 25% minority and then only 5% women? So if that's what other towns do, uh, then uh, I'll, I'll defer to what other towns do, but it just seems so low for minority, so low for women. Why would one be 25% and the other five? No idea. When I've been looking at this over the last couple months, it was random numbers all over the place. Um, the state says, you know, you can set a minimum of 25 or whatever you want. I just think that it should be open to everyone regardless of what it is. And we don't even really have a good accounting of what we could or couldn't do for the purchasing aspect of it. So I think you know, moving the, the women slash female to 10% is not an issue. We can get rid of that one section and just combine them. But we don't even know what that, that number really means because we haven't even started looking at it yet. Okay. And was there a percentage for veterans? No. Just it's just random, and that's why I think going to the state database would make it better because when we do a bid spec um, and, and a solicitation, we can actually sit there and say to anyone in the data set we can use, or now we might get shoestrung, where mm -hmm. if we say we just say it's, it's a veteran business, but a, a, women minority, a women business applies, they're actually kicked out. So by opening it up, it opens up the pool of candidates because we've never done it before and let's see what the pool is like. And if we have to change the ordinance in two years when we look at it again, but we have to, we have to start somewhere. Change 5%. Um, the property maintenance code, I'm going to ask to be tabled until the June meeting. We're having some technical difficulties with actually getting this thing to fit on a piece of paper. So with that one right now, we're going to ask the table. And there are still some suggestions coming in for property oh, code. Oh, glad I didn't know. There's still some suggestions coming in. Um, 
The next bullet point is the police and fire alarm system. Currently, right now, the city, as the mayor has said at the last meeting, is probably the only one in the state of New Jersey that doesn't have um, a penalty for false burglar alarms. The draft ordinance is before you, to, it, before you right now. There's two items for discussion. Um, myself and the mayor are in agreement of one that in the ordinance it doesn't say that you get one, two, or three times free. Um, so we're proposing three times. On the fourth time, you'll actually start the clock ticking. And then there was some discussion on about old systems that don't comply and can't hook up to our police department. The discussion centered on do we force someone to upgrade? And that's, we didn't think it was appropriate. So there's gonna be two little changes to the proposed ordinance that you have in front of you. Three times uh, for free, and then the old system does not need to be upgraded. Wait, three false alarms for free? Oh, I, you, you had me on one and maybe two, but I'm gonna say two. three. Yeah, you want two? Three. All right, two. two. And that's per, per year. Per, per year. year. Per year. Per calendar year. I'll make calendar. sure it says calendar. And if you already have an alarm, you don't have to pay a registration fee? No, we give you a, a little bit of time to, before you actually have to. I think it was August 1st or something like that. But everyone has to register with the police department whether or not their alarm goes to the police department. Correct. Or goes and the registration was free through August 1st or September 1st. And we're, can we send letter, letters out? Or how are you getting the word out on that? It's just going to have to be word of mouth through you know, newspaper articles, through social media. Um, we'll send it to the churches, but we don't have a, the people we have already registered. Right. So it's the people that don't register that we have to try to find. But shouldn't they be checked out first? We will have some, some code from. or fire department or the police department? The police might have some from repeat calls through their system. We'll look through that and try to notify people, but it's really going to have to be a campaign to tell people that this is, you know, register if your system permits it. In the past, how did you register? Like, I know I have an alarm. I've had an alarm for 25 years, if not more. And once the police showed up because nobody was there. I didn't register, I guess my company Your, com your company is okay, supposed company to register it. Okay. Most will. This actually requires the company to register it. Okay. But if they hadn't registered it, if you did it yourself and you didn't register it, this will actually help. So will there be, like, somebody like me, can I call up, like, the police department and say, I know you guys showed up once. Am I still registered? You would be, yes. Okay. So, and the housing so authority who do you call? register all ways, right? Just call the main number. Just call the main yes, number? Yes, the housing authority. The housing authority would yeah. take care of the phone. We'll skip the metered parking and go back to it in a second, if I may. Um, the COPS hiring program. In the packet tonight is a resolution and some data information for the COPS hiring program. It is the same thing as the SAFER program from the police department, um, a 75-25 match split where the city would pay 25% of an officer's salary for the first few years. Um, the police department's recommending five. I'm not recommending that number at this point in time. Um, I'm recommending two to be consistent, one with the fire department and and also not to further strain what could be, a, you know, next couple of years until we get out of transitional aid. So the recommendation for me is that to amend the, the COPS grant to two, we'll provide you with new data, um, which in this, in the resolution you'll notice is wrong. It's from the software's template. So we'll actually try to break it out through Excel in the next couple of days. You don't have to make a vote on this tonight. It's due on June 23rd. So if you want, you can table it if you're not comfortable with it until the June meeting. Um, but we're, I'm recommending two. Um, and next year, as we do more of a long-term fiscal planning, we'll be able to actually get a number at the beginning of next year of what these grants should look like. The best opportunity for the city to get these subsidized officers um, both police and fire is, is when we have transitional aid. So next year might be the last time that we actually have a very good chance to get it. Hey, but Kevin, we did, I thought, a total of three firemen. I mean, two paid, I mean, there was a lengthy discussion about this. Two paid and then one under, or two under the grant and 
Was it just two? Because I thought it was three. Well, it's total. two. It's two under the grant. Two under the grant. But prior to the. Uh, but grant, somebody was retiring, and we we're you picking have to up someone the for that. that you right. had when you applied for the grant. Okay. Same thing applies to this. Okay. And this would be the same as far as much as we approved it that night. We before it's officially approved, it has to come back to be approved again. Yes. Right. Yep. So okay. if something happens poorly financially over the next, you know, couple months before hopefully we receive award. You can always turn down the grant. Okay. Uh, the parking consultant RFP, we are again recommending um, rejecting it. Yeah. Uh, the talking to the parking committee, um, discussion between the parking committee and myself, we feel that at this point in time, we can do it cheaper to hire the staff. Um, having an office manager coordinate the contract and coordinate the calls for service and have someone doing the third party consulting. Um, the savings from both RFPs that we've issued and hopefully reject the second time now is around $100,000, $125,000 um, from what we've entailed. So we think we can do it cheaper and basically have the same service. With the staff person. With the staff, yes. Um, it would entail at least one full time, for lack of a better term, mechanic to fix the meters and maybe two or three part-time people depending on how we go. Um, we can get this done and up and running, I think, faster than the parking consultant could be too. Because we can start advertising you know, in the next seven days and start receiving resumes and applications and hire on a first come, first serve basis. And this is in conjunction with the parking committee's recommendations? Yes. So even with benefits and everything, it'll still be less expensive than a consultant? Yes, because we can do some part-time work that they can't um, or didn't propose, and we would have more control. The second to last thing on the, the list is beach yoga. We've had numerous um, entities ask to do yoga on the beach. Um, when we've started to try to put this out as a concess concession, myself and city attorney talked about this last week, it is a concession item. Um, but all these organizations want to do this before the beach officially opens, like at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, where we really don't have any jurisdiction over it. Um, no one has said they wanted to spend more than a half hour of time on this uh, at doing a yoga class. So both myself and the city attorney feel that there's really nothing we can do before we actually start charging for the beach. And we just wanted everyone to, to just be informed that if they're going off hours, it's, it's on them. Every group has said it's no more than two to three people. And at the most, one said we might have 10 if like family members come in. So we're going to ask the police department to watch it in the mornings to see if there's a group there. But right now, our hands are sort of tied because it's all nonprofits. No one is for profit. No one is charging anything. It's one of those things that we're just going to have to monitor. And, if we have to change a, a regulation somewhere. And the city won't have any liability because. It's just a group, right now, they're, they're all selling it as it's a group of people getting together. It's not organized. It's not, you know, yoga school coming. It's just almost free play on the beach for four hours. People toss awesome on football. Um, open to anybody with no charge. So we're sort of stuck in the middle of a gray area, but if we start seeing it getting too big and too. We'll have to try to figure something out. It was different than the other concessions in the sense that those that were seeking the opportunity to do this were not charging. Uh, with the other concessions, whether it be the swan boats, the surf lessons, uh, paddle boarding, they're all business people that are, you know, they charge a standard fee for those who want to participate. Um, in this instance, those who have approached the city are not charging. And they are just basically going onto the beach like any person can go on the beach at any time during the day. We always have liability if someone gets hurt on municipal property, but it's no different than if anybody just goes down to the beach or goes to a park and a reads. football yeah. and does some other activity. So the last one is the parking metered parking amending ordinance. Um, this is something that was started a while ago. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Clerk. Of amending the metered parking ordinance. This amends a year or so, I would think. 
it's, it, it mends, it, it really what it does is when we initially adopted our meter parking ordinances, there was a lot of just inconsistencies with regards to um, non-essential items within the ordinance. So like referencing a wrong section or referencing you know wrong areas within the code. And really what this is, is not changing content, it's just clean up. Okay. That's all it is, it's just clean up to make sure it's all consistent with that throughout the whole entire code. And these are all ordinances that have already been adopted. So, you know, the areas that are subject to metered parking, whether they're on street or municipally controlled parking lots like City Hall lot, um, have already been established by ordinance, as have all of the rates. And we're not changing any of that with this. It's just uh, non-substantive items that were picked up by the codifier, essentially, and Cindy. Okay. But we up till January 27th of this year. Correct. Many questions? Because I just went through all. You said you had more questions. Uh, well, why don't let me check and see if he hit all mine, so you can go. I just have one. If you want to go. Um. Just one question. Do we have a foot patrol at six and seven o'clock in the morning? Police foot patrol. Are they in their cars at that time of morning? It depends on where you're talking about in the city. And well, I talk about where they're going to have the yoga at. Where? On the boardwalk. On the boardwalk. No, on the beach. Well, they're going to have it on the beach. Yeah, at on the actual beach. Right. And the sand, the I beach. guess. Yeah. But we have people walking up and down the ball, patrolmen. We're going to ask them to for the beginning part of the season when the yoga is supposed to start, just to check. And we'll know right away if there's people there. And we need patrolmen down there monitoring the dog beach. Yes. <clears throat> And in terms of the yoga, are they going to be restricted to any particular area of the beach or just wherever? Right now it's wherever. But they know that they have to be off when the beach opens. Yes. What in the morning. Four. Four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, I can go. It just one. 2016-237. Just explain how this, is going, this process is going to differ from what we're doing now, how the electronic tax sale would take place. Oh, okay. Uh, the resolution that the councilwoman is questioning is 2016-237, which authorizes and has been approved by the State Department of Community Affairs to do internet-based um, tax sale. Currently what happens with the tax sale is it's held in this room. So you physically have to be here when we do our accelerated tax sale in December. This allows it to be internet based. So you can be at home in your kitchen on the computer. Um, it will open it up to a worldwide audience. Um, most municipalities that have seen, that have done this, have seen an increase in revenue. So that's the goal of this is to expand it from outside this room to anyone with a computer and internet access. And 238 makes Tyrone as tax collector he's statutorily the one who does it this gives him as part of the pilot program that DCA does you need to designate designate the person who statutorily is Tyrone okay. go, go back to 237 one second that's uh, electronic okay so rock industries why were they selected who else applied no one else, it's not us who selects them. They are a state procurement. They're the only ones that the state authorizes to do it. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, 230, 216, 239, the agreement uh, for Wesley Lake, is that, what's that for exactly? It just says it's $6,000 for a shared service. Uh, resolution. 2016 239 which is authorizing the agreement with Neptune for the improvements to Wesley Lake there's going to be an amendment to that to for a one-year agreement um, that is also for the cleanup of the the weeds and the vegetation okay. that has been discussed where the resolution states that since we don't have a budget passed while Neptune does they'll pay for it and then once we get an official budget, we'll, we'll pay for it. Okay, so then I would just 
ask Cindy to pull that off consent and put that on the individual. 216, 240. The, I, I just didn't understand what this was. That's rejecting parking. That's what? That's rejecting the parking. Oh, rejecting the parking RFPs. Yep. Okay. 1-way streets that we're doing or we're voting on that Wednesday right is that the ordinance for you can table it again if you want but well, the only thing I was gonna say is can we get a plan of attack to all the people who live on those streets like a mailer out to those people specifically that we're changing those streets to one ways is there a way that we can compile that do or, we have, or have or have just somebody go put a door hanger on their door do we have notice notify them in the past There's nobody on the 200 block of fifth, but there would be one or two houses on the 200 block of sunset. So yes, they should be notified. That's not a legal requirement, but certainly as a matter of policy, you could do that as a courtesy. Yeah, I'm fine voting on it. I'm just saying before enforcement were to take place, we should, we should put door hangers or mail something to these people saying your streets becoming a one-way. All right, that's all I got. Yeah. 2013 236 this is just a notice saying somebody's getting a refund it just says block and lot I've asked in the past can we just get an address also because block 158 lot 7 means nothing to me but if it said 1407 4th so in the future if we could just get that that's 510 deal Lake unit 9 J J okay that is an issue that um, prior councils have brought up as well just the block and lot sometimes is difficult to right. know what you're talking no, no, about no, if you have the actual street address yeah, we it screw helps. That up. yeah. Two, six, 2016 2016-247 this is resolution amending temporary appropriate appropriations for 2016 I know we only have a temporary budget but some of these numbers are like how could we leave out of the temporary budget Six hundred fifty thousand dollars for nine eleven dispatch services. I mean, these are like some big numbers, which which are, doesn't impact the budget whatsoever. But why why, I guess, how do we do this? Because the payment wasn't due in the first quarter, when you would normally do temporary budget sets up January, February, March. Um, this second temporary budget sets up April, May, and June, and the payment is due in June. That's why. Okay, let's go to the bond ordinance 2016-20. That's a 225, that's for roads again? Or no? No, 225 is the one that was, cleans up the metered parking. No, no, I'm sorry. Bond ordinance number 2016 20. The 225, I'm saying $2,250,000. Oh. Uh, bond ordinance 2016 20, which is for introduction, is um, a refunding of bonds currently with the Montgomery, Montgomery oh, I'm sorry, Monmouth County Improvement Authority. It's similar to what was done last month, where there was a savings of approximately 40000 this combined with every other savings will uh, bring a savings of a couple hundred thousand depending on the interest rate so it's a refund of okay. what we currently have ordinance 23 says being pulled that's the yes okay and the last one Twenty-five. Again, you explained that this is cleaning up. It's cleaning up the. Just yep. clean up language. No changes. No nothing. Correct. Thank you.
going to be wonderful to have all those ordinances in one place in the city code as opposed to having all these different ordinances adopted through the years that anytime there's been a change to the metered parking ordinance you have to look at all of them together and piece them together in order to make further updates so now at least they'll all be in one place and I'd like to bring to your attention resolution 2016-245 which is a word of contract for electronic beach bat system uh, that bid is due at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, so we'll review for completeness and recommend award if everyone, if any of the respondents are deemed complete. Um, but right now, that is just the placeholder, so that might change. And I want to thank um, Gail for helping the city receive um, $400,000 in a Brownfields grant. If you want to take two seconds and describe that, Michael. <laughs> You want to just ex just two seconds oh. on, on what we got I mean we got a tr we got the most amount of we got the same amount of money as like Jersey City like very very big cities I mean that's a huge accomplishment that one a credit to the city and all the organizations and people who assisted us to get that uh, the city received notification on Friday that we received a four hundred thousand dollar brownfield development grant which will identify and start some cleanup process of brownfields throughout the city Brownfield is classified as an underutilized and or contaminated property um, somewhere located in the city. And contamination could be anything it, you know, don't freak out, it's just dirty. Um, so it was a great grant, um, a very great, greatly written grant. Um, I'm very happy that we received that amount of money. Um, we should be out to RFP as per the state MOU, the grant management side of it um, within the next two or three weeks. All right, we'll move on to matters from city council. Anybody? No, that no. was it. I thought that's what we were on. No, <laughs> no I did that too. Okay, no. Okay. You, did, you, okay, you did yours. Y Yvonne? No. Jesse? Uh, I have what, this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where do we stand on the transportation center leases? We are, uh, we, we notified the existing tenants that we are going out to bid, uh, that the end of the current uh, arrangement, which they're on a month to month, is as of July 1. Um, we have the spec just about ready to be advertised, and at least one of the two current tenants has expressed an interest in bidding on it this time around. So, Every day. yeah, it's in process. Okay. So we'd look at the first meeting in July for the recommendation for award. If not the last meeting in June, depending on the calendar lays. Okay. Signs in the park, no picnics. Working on that one. Tape. Tape the signs. Tape. <laughs> Tape. Tape, no fun signs. No, just no picnics. Everything else, I have no problem with. Uh, I'm going to read it. I know, I know. I'm just going to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two Wednesdays ago, or Wednesday and a half ago, Mr. Gary Carr from the state was supposed to come down, my favorite person, from parking, and never showed up. And you, you told me not to blast him in the state yet until you get some information. So when can I blast him? He's provided us with the information. He gave us the map of the garage. Um, we've done our numbering of it. I'm going to talk to Mr. Carr about the rest of the signage that needs to be put up so we can ensure that we receive the um, correct amount and proper location of spaces under the agreement. And we're going to start drafting the next agreement um, that would, for lack of a better phrase, codify everything because the current agreement sunsets in February of next year and we'd rather just get this all settled once and for all. Um, so it's just me sitting down, giving this to Gary, having a couple phone conversations and we should have everything done. The larger issue is obviously getting the agreement redone because that goes to the Attorney General's office before anything gets done. But he's come back, he's apologized if there's been any confusion. He said, <laughs> um, and 
he he said, you know, we'll get this done as soon as we possibly can. So he's given us what we've asked for. It's not snowing. It's not snowing, but it might be too breezy. Uh, he's given us everything he's asked for. We're working through it, and hopefully we have an agreement end of summer, early fall that ends everything, delineates it for the next five years in the end parking garage. Summer. End of summer. Because it has to go to the AG. It, the Attorney General has to review all their contracts and agreements. That's why. That takes the long time. But in ter that's for the second phase of it. We'll, he's agreed on everything with the parking that we said, delineating the spots, how to label the spots. Everything is 99% done. Okay, we we just you. have to get it codified. Two quick things in public interest. Uh, the bridges, the bridge from Asbury Park into Inner Lake and then into Allenhurst on Friday at 8 o'clock. It's going to be a grand opening if anybody wants to be there. Be there at 7.50 a.m. And then on Friday, the Sunset Avenue Bridge connecting Ocean Township, the Water Master section with Asbury Park. Uh, dedication at 8.30. Please arrive by 8.20. Just so everybody knows, Donna Logden will be mayor for the day. Donna Logden owns... Sunset Landing. Donna Landon has put up with more inconvenience than anybody I know, so I've invited her to be the city's representative to help cut the ribbon. So that's all I have. Thank you. Any more matters for the city manager? Matters by the city attorney? Nothing at this time. Have a motion to open the meeting up for a public portion? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. <coughs> Behave yourselves, and you have three minutes to speak. <laughs> when you go out to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. Are they? Did you get anything Rabbit Wiener, 601 Madison. Um, minor annoyance, I went to the beach today to put my stuff in my locker because it had to be paid for by the 15th and I was advised they were all sealed shut and won't be open till Thursday or Friday. When I questioned the gentleman, who was very nice by the way, he said I should have really re read my lease. And I said, I don't have a lease. He said, oh sure, when you got your locker. I said, well that was five years ago and my memory is not that good that I should have remembered the date. So my suggestion is that when you get your renewal notice, which is printed very nicely, that information should be on it saying the lockers won't be open till this Thursday or Friday. That's what I was told. And I made a note for myself not to carry my stuff down to the beach until I know my locker is open and available. Uh, my second comment is the Bangs Avenue garage. And I, I think what I just heard is really not a great answer for me. Uh, I, I, I'm paying that extra money to the state. I've paid $175 so far extra to the state of New Jersey to park in a Bangs Avenue lot, which I've parked in for five years. Waiting for them to figure this out, uh, you know, until the end of the year, <clears throat> I, I just don't understand what the holdup is. The merchants that I'm involved with on a volunteer basis would love to see the garage open on Saturday during the day, on Sunday, on holidays, and with the summer coming up, it looks like it's just gonna be the same thing unless there's something I don't know about. And that gentleman, we still would love to know the names of his bosses. And uh, there are people ready to write to their own representatives to say why one man basically has held us up for a year, uh, both income and convenience for the town. And that's my only comment. Thank you, sir. Just right now, we do have designated spots. So you could switch paying to Meridian and pay to the city tomorrow. Yeah, but I, I, that means I'd have to be all the way upstairs. And why would I have to give up my spot that I've had for five years? You'd have, uh, I'm sorry, you'd have what, upstairs? All the spots are upstairs. They're, needed, they're numbered upstairs on the fourth and, I think the fourth floor or the fifth floor. Take, you'd the fifth take, floor. You'd have to take the, no, the well, fifth floor. You'd you know, it, it, floor. there's no reason, for, to my mind, that I have to do that. So, uh, well, you we know. have some on the second and third floor. Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. I could be wrong. We do. Don't yeah. listen to Rita, we do. Okay. We do, we're renting them already. So mm -hmm. there is Now, are, are we renting? Because I thought we weren't renting yet. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, we are renting. We were renting at least eight to ten that I know of already. Okay. And they're on the second and third floor. And there is I, I thought that we weren't renting until we had permission from the state. We've got 
Okay. We, we made our own permission. Okay. All right. We are renting some, so you can talk to Officer Dello tomorrow, and he can hook you up as quick as possible. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Time. Okay. Hi, Rita Miranda, Wake Avenue. Uh, I we had a park on the fifth on the top top floor when we were there one night on the Friday night. So I don't know. That's where the meters are, right? So you're finish. talking about the second and third floor? I'll let you finish. Huh? Finish. Okay, okay. Uh, today I was riding down Third Avenue. First I was going out going towards the parkway, and I saw a whole bunch of foreigners working on the school. And I saw a bunch of young men from our neighborhood just standing there watching the workers. I mean, I, I was really offended by that. And then when I came back, they were still working, and the same boys were watching the workers work. I think something should be done about that. They're the ones that want to work, the Americans. They should be put to work instead of watching somebody else work. And, and, and they were like young men just watching. I had to leave early this morning. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, I got a lot of paperwork from uh, Cindy about the senior building. Nothing relates to us, Asbury Park. Everything I got was interfaith neighbors and their finances. Nothing from Asbury. It doesn't show one place where we are condo owners with interfaith neighbors. I thought that was kind of strange. But a couple of weeks ago, the city manager said everything was A-OK. -okay. I don't think it is. They formed another corporation. I found out through the, the paperwork I got. And the other thing is the master deed. That has to be someplace in the building. I know the assessor is on vacation, but somebody must have a key to that office to get the master deed. In my letter, I got that I should go to the county and get it. Why should I have to go to the county and get it? Shouldn't you have the master deed here to show what's going on? First of all, there's a lot going on there that's not in the master deed. So I th this is a very big story, and I think you better look into it. All the finances I got from Cindy show nothing doesn't show the three million dollars that we borrowed the taxpayers to give to interfaith neighbors nowhere doesn't show that we pay the seven thousand five hundred quarterly doesn't show any of that and and the, by the way the master deed is 98 pages and that should be here in the assessor's office but which I understand is under lock and key somebody else must have the key to get in there to get it I mean, I think it's outrageous the way the paperwork goes. And we gave them $3 million. And I, this council is not responsible. I'm not blaming you. It was a previous council. And I'm not blaming the city manager. But I think the city manager, you should be looking into this more closely. This is a serious matter. And we're not even in the condo association now. Something's wrong. Okay. I'll start off with Michael. Okay. Uh, number one, I'll go back to part of your question and part of Michael's also, Robert's. The top floor is pay at the meter. Right. The, the spots that are going to be reserved are on the lower floors. We, okay. I could not in good faith rent you a spot for $75 a month on the top floor, and every time it snowed, you get plowed in. Right. So, so that's why the top floor right now is for daily transactions not for year-round transactions uh, as far as what school project you're talking about I don't know and I don't want to know you can go to the Board of Education about that uh, how you can drive down the street and differentiate foreigners from Americans is like I guess you've got Superman vision uh, I can't do that as far as the master deed I know the master deed to my house is, is in real every deed in the city is, we would need a building quite large so we'll check into that as far as what you're talking about as far as the information you got from Cindy <laughs> I'm not sure what you got because I didn't see your over request but whatever 
Michael told you, whatever I told you <coughs> three months ago, as far as what we read, what we got, if you don't have a copy of that, we'll give you a copy of that because that delineates exactly everything we told you. We wouldn't make that up just to sham you. Michael, go ahead. We're not even trustees. It's a condo association, and Michael has told you 17 times. They have two votes, and we have one vote. No, uh, not according to the paperwork I got. We don't okay. have any. Okay, we'll, we'll give you the paperwork we have. Okay. Michael, you can finish up. Okay, yeah, Michael's going to finish up. We don't have the master deed. We looked. That's. <laughs> yeah, but we don't. And just add it to the list of things we don't have here that we have to get at some point in time. It's a lot. So we'll get it at some point. But as the mayor said, as I have said, Interfaith has two votes. We have one vote. We've asked them to change. They said no. That's the only leverage we have. We do, make, we do pay the payments. You didn't request that in your Oprah request. You asked for a copy of the audit statements, which we provided to you, the ones that we had. If you want, we'll try to find where the the audit pay the seventy five hundred dollars what line item that's been paid for and we'll give it to you but we don't have the master deed we all looked we'll get it at some point that's amazing. Um, you're going to get the master deed right yes at some point mm -hmm. your replacements at the microphone Okay, Rita, Rita, you, you exceeded the time. I'm just telling you. Okay. Jan Sparrow, Second Avenue. I would just like to offer a few kudos to the city on a positive note. Uh, this Department of Public Works has done a great job downtown of cleaning up all the, where, I don't even know what you call them, where all the trees are planted, pulled the weeds, put in some really great um, mulch, and many of us are going to plant flowers and make it look good. They were out this weekend cleaning up the garbage cans on Saturday and Sunday, which again beautified the city, so kudos to them. Um, we saw a great police pres presence on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, wandering, well, wandering, walking the streets and being down by all the events, so I think it sent a strong signal that the city is paying attention, so I think that was positive. And I would like to say that there are many people in this town that we went and judged the uh, uh, elementary and middle school science projects. And we have some budding scientists in Asbury Park and some kids that are doing some really great things that I think don't get enough credit for the work that they do. And so uh, if anybody's interested next year, they're always looking for volunteers to uh, spend a day judging a science, all these science contests. And some of the preschoolers, by the way, did great projects that I might say were even better than some of the middle schoolers. And last but not least, it's really true. Um, Fabulous. And Michelle Alonzo has been so responsive to us downtown around uh, looking for opportunities to create bike racks. She did some great research. This group that we run for uh, downtown business associates, we're touching base with all the businesses to see who's interested in putting in bike racks. We pay them. We pay for them $120. The city will just put them in to try to alleviate some of the parking. And she's done a really terrific job to help us figure out how to help uh, get better, more bike racks downtown. So there's a lot of stuff going on that I think is really positive that I think we also have to spend some time thinking about. I think we talk about the negative stuff. I know we have to, but I think we talk about it a lot. And I feel like it's really important for us to process that our city is really moving forward in the most positive of ways. And so many of us here, and we all come all the time, are really proud of what we're doing to make this the best small city in the East Coast. So thank you to everybody that's making that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Segrano, Long Branch. Um, what I wanted to bring up is uh, yesterday on Facebook, someone had put that they got a ticket and their time wasn't even up on the meter downtown. I know a friend who personally two Fridays ago went with a husband the thing, she had the thing on her phone to let her know when it ran out. She was downstairs within the 10 minute grace period of time and she had a ticket on her car. I thought you get 10 minutes in between getting the ticket and when the time runs out. Um, I don't know how much time, had. and a while back someone had put it on Facebook and I just thought they were a complainer. So there's three incidents in the last five weeks where the people are getting ticketed 
really quick and something I thought the cops when they ride around they're able to tell when the meters are going to expire or what's going on I thought they were in better sync then the other thing is um, have you guys ever received budget um, from each department per month yet have any of you got what each department's doing by the month because I have been asking always when are we going to have budget committee meetings and I guess we're too busy up in City Hall to do that. And I gather we're too busy to get the master deed too because I would call up Christine Hadlin and have us email it to me as quick as possible. If it was important to me, it's not that difficult. Or I would drive out the freehold and pick it up if I really needed it. So I'm sure if you needed it for your house, you would get it within a day. But I guess Rita's request isn't that important. Now, we got two things. I guess the hotel's opening up and the bridge, so that's good for the city. Um, there has to be a better way to make a big deal on Facebook about it and, you know, social media. But that's kind of a big deal, the bridge opening up and the hotel. So I, my question is, have you guys gotten department head budget or anything like that per month or anything? I mean, can't be that busy up in City Hall because when I call up, I know nobody answers the phone. Thank you. Uh, budget request as the budget status is required quarterly um, as per the state statute and the council received it along with myself um, I think that was it no budget committee and well we know you're too busy for that but I'm saying the other thing is we do need the budget per month I mean we don't have any information how do you know how much you're gonna save next year if nobody knows what's going on Okay, thank you. Uh, and what about um, the parking meters? So, I, I only know this because I did a tour when I was on the parking committee. They have a little, um, like, Kindle. And on the Kindle, it shows up red, not paid, green, paid, orange. And don't quote me on these colors, but I think those are them. No, whatever. Orange or grace period. So, I'm not suggesting that they, these people didn't get a ticket, but I would look at the ticket because when it's orange, when I drove around with these parking guys for a day, they never ticketed orange, right? So, it's red, you run out of time, they, they go to your car and they ticket. Orange, you're in your 10 minute grace period, green, you're fine. So, again, I'm not suggesting that these people are not telling the truth. They very well could be, and there very well could have been a mistake. But generally speaking, in a day I spent riding around with them, it comes up the 10 minute grace period and they're fine. Well, the lady took a picture of the ticket time and her receipt time. And that was, was on Facebook minutes. yesterday. And then the other woman, her name's Marianne, that lives on, on the west side, her husband said just pay the money. It wasn't about their time, but she went down and they did fix it for her. But it was like, if you don't have the time to deal with this, you get a problem. I, I don't know how much time it takes. I, I, I know people who have called up either Eugene Dello, if he's working, if he's not working, he'll send somebody there within five minutes and they'll look at it and they can go right on these little apps of theirs and they'll say, you want to know something? You're right. And they take it and they dismiss it. So we- I know, but you have to go there. Well, no, well, as soon as you get it, call. Oh, well, so I, I didn't call, know that. Say there's a mistake. And I mean, this has been the most unbelievable city as far as like saying, you're absolutely right. Here it is in black and white. We're and wrong, you're right, and they get their money back on the spot. No, no, I appreciate that. So, and who's gonna do the social media about the bridge and the hotel, because that's a big event gonna happen. We, we just found out about the bridge today. I mean, it was in last week's paper that the county said they would be open Monday, come higher hell of water, and today's Monday and they're not open. Well, at least we're going to have it. It's good. It looks really nice. It's beautiful. It, it's good. Listen, but listen, um, do a press release and send out something on Facebook. I'm sure it'll be in our email blast. I mean, if we just found out today, you know, give us a day or so to get something whipped up. So, okay, are you guys going to push? I know the state says every three months you're not going to push for um, department budgets once a month just to stay on top of it. It's like losing weight. If you monitor it, you can lose weight. You can save us money. Thank you very much, and have a good Memorial Day weekend. And, um... Okay, probably too, I guess. Thank you, Jared. And just as soon as we found out about the $400,000 within six hours, communications director had a press release out there for all the media. 
And so it's, we just found out about the bridge late this afternoon. We'll be up tomorrow. Hi, I'm Gail Helfick from Asbury Park. Um, I'm actually here to thank you as a council and thank Mike and Michelle for the support. As Amy said, yes, we won this great grant for the city. Um, and I was involved in that. I'm no longer working for the company that wrote that grant, but I still support them. I think they have a great record. But I wanted to thank the council, first of all, to recognize the importance of that grant and to support that. Um, Mike and Michelle, they worked with us when we wrote that grant. They, within hours, provided comments on the draft. Um, Councilwoman Clayton, you helped. Um, she actually spent about a half an hour more on the phone with me telling me about Memorial Drive and things that were going on there that I didn't know about that we were able to put in the grant. And she also was able to secure a um, letter of recommendation from Workforce Development that supported that grant, which was something that we were in need of. Um, also, Interfaith Neighbors, they not only provided a letter of recommendation for the grant for the city, but they had access to some statistical data that we did not have that helped support uh, that grant application. So we were able to boost to that application as well. And also um, the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Um, we were able to get a recommendation from them, which I found out was not a, an easy task, or did they do that lightly? So, um, you know, there are a lot of people that the city owes gratitude toward for getting that grant. And then the other thing, just to go with Jerry was saying and tell you, John, the system is working because I'll thank this gentleman right here. Uh, right before we came to this meeting, we got a ticket on Cookman Avenue and it was given to us at the exact same time we had just paid the meter and parked. And he was on the street. I called him. He called the guy from parking. They came within minutes, right? They looked at he saw what we were right he looked at it that was the end of it and was done so the system does work if you do work on it and i, I thank you and your partner for listening to us and calling so thank you thank you and as much as we thank we also have to thank congressman frank palone uh with the four hundred thousand dollars that is a lot of money for asbury park motion to close move it Sarka. all right if there's no further business motion to adjourn Okay. Great job. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.